egg collectors. We got a whole bunch of silver to go through. I just picked this up at an estate sale today. Was assured that none of this was cherry picked. Uh, this was just from a family that was selling their house. Um, I think this was a collection passed down from like an older relative. Anyway, I'm going to be going through this. There's uh, quarters, a lot of Washingtons. There's some Mercury dimes, a couple other pieces in there. I'm going to be looking for key dates, any varieties. Uh, this is a pure silver hut looking for extra special rarities. Let's see what we find. Okay, so I opened up the bag, dumped everything out. It's a really nice, attractive looking pile right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sort these and count them off without going through any of the dates. I see an SLQ right there. I'm going to put them in uh, tubes and then I'm going to go through them more systematically so I don't have this big uh, messy pile to go through. All right, let's get this going. All right, I've gotten the quarters away. We got 28 Standing Liberty. I've not gone through any of those. And we have um, 160 Washington quarters that will go through, see what we got. Uh, let me get these Mercury Dimes away. And there's one, um, you know, Franklin Half Dollar. Uh, we'll, we'll pull that aside, look at that first. All right, let me get this away and then we'll officially start. All right, uh, those were um, uh, 69 or 70 dimes, I just lost count. But here, we got uh, the Franklin. Let's take a look what we got. Uh, 1962, um, pretty well worn. But um, you know what, it's nice getting silver. I actually got this at silver value. Um, so yeah, pretty nice. All right, so I just um, spun out the Mercury Dimes. Um, all right, so I'm looking for key dates. Key date Mercury Dimes are uh, 1916 from Denver Mint, 1921, 21 from Denver Mint, 1942 over one, that's an error, or 1942 over one D. So I'm gonna start going through these you know, I think a lot of these are very, very well worn. I'm not even sure how uh, readable the dates are. But, you know, let's go through these real time. I'll put them all underneath uh, the magnifying scope that I have. And let's just, let's just see. And we got 19, maybe 1917. Really hard to see. Let's see if we got a mint mark. I don't see a mint mark, so we'll put that one aside. Let's take a look at the next one. 1945. That's a pretty nice looking coin. I mean, it's 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 worn, without a doubt. Let's see if we got a mint mark. Okay, so we got 1945. Let's see what we got here. 1942. All right, so this one is where there's a, a two over one variety. And this does not look like it's it's that variety, which does not surprise me. And these things are hard to come by. But like I said, this is an old collection. It has not been gone through. I think I'm the first collector really going through it since the person who purchased or uh, pulled together the collection. 1920. And too bad it's not a 21. I don't see mint mark. We'll just keep going through these. 1942. That one kind of looks like there's some, maybe that's damage. I don't think that's the error coin. Well-worn coin. 1917, all right. Um, it's one of the older ones, let's see. 1918, maybe with a mint mark, nah, really hard to tell, very well worn. All right, another 1942, does not appear to be the 42 over one variety, keep looking. A nice toner of this 1935, interesting gold colors. Pretty nice. All right, so I wanted to show you a picture of what 
the uh, 1942 over one looks like. Um, you know, you can find this on the internet very easily. And so far, nothing like that. Here's the latest 1942 that I just pulled out. You know, completely uh, different looking than the one with the overpunched uh, date. All right, nothing really spectacular yet, um, but not really, not really saying anything. Early, earliest one I found was uh, 1917, the fairly uh, clear date to read. A lot of 1935s, which are kind of interesting. Wasn't expecting to see like um, a large quantity in the 30s. Then we got 1918 again. It would be really nice to find uh, 1916D like that. And, oh, that's interesting. Is that a 1916? Yes, that looks like a 1916. Let me see if there's a D in the back. Really hard to tell. Let me get this under a larger scope. I have to zoom in even more. That is definitely 1916. Very well worn. Um, let's flip it over. And see if we can make out a mint mark, or at least there's, let's hope there is one. And, oh gee, you know, it's very worn. I don't see any signs of a mint mark. Maybe, I don't know, maybe that, but I think it's just wishful thinking. All right, well, that was kind of exciting for a moment. We'll go through the rest. I got like maybe about 12 more to go through, and then we'll wrap it up to see if we have anything interesting. Went through the last three. This one may be the nicest condition one from 1944. Um, probably in very fine condition. Let's take a look at the back. Back's really nice. Uh, no split bands, so maybe very fine. Obverse, getting close to very fine, extremely fine. Uh, reverse, but you know, nice little Mercury dime hunt. Um, yeah, this is a penny tube. I don't have any dime tubes, but uh, it'll do the job. All right, well, we'll take a look at the SLQs, which are in here, and then we'll take a look for any key date Washingtons. All right, we got the SLQs out. All right, key dates are 1916. 1918 over 7S, 1920D, 1921-1923S, 1924D, 1924S, and 1927S. You know, these are really worn. Uh, we'll be lucky to get anything with uh, clear dates. We're going to do this real time. Maybe 1919 with the three stars on the back. Date's completely worn. Completely worn off. No discernible date. Yeah, I have a feeling it's gonna be like that for pretty much most of these. Silver is silver. I mean, I am not gonna complain. I did get the set at a uh, silver melt value. And the coins, uh, you know, so you know, worth a little more than that. All right, so we got 1930. Um, really happy that we got clean date, so I'll put that one aside for an album, maybe. We got no date, and I think we can read a date on this one. E yikes, no, not really. Let's see. Nope. No date. No date. You know, the SLQ is one of my favorite coins. Um, I just bought um, a really high graded um, PCGS one, which uh, is gonna be shipping to me very soon and I'll, I'll show that on the channel. I got that in a MS66, uh, so it's Mint State 66, very high grade, uh, full head. Um, so that's an investment grade coin, uh, but still really, really love the Standing Liberty quarters. You know, I'm not even checking the back to see these from the 1917. <clears throat> I probably should. I'll do that later. Just doing some quick searching, see if any dates. Most of them, 
they'll, they'll have the three stars, so they are the type two. All right, so this is got a three on it. Maybe, maybe 1933, I don't know, 23. Actually 23, because Washington Quarter started in 1932. Again, really no dates. Oh, we got a date on this one. Another 1930. Oh, that's really nice. All right, so we got two, two, two coins with discernible dates, both 1930. No date there. This one's pretty nice. 1930 again. All right, so we got three coins, all dated with 30s, where the date is legible. Beside those three, pretty much nothing else. Uh, looks like we got stars down there, they're hard, very hard to see. No date. This one is worn almost completely flat. No date, and here's the last one. And really cannot make out a date on that either. All right, well, you know, a little disappointing that so many do not have any legible dates. Um, although, I got another little pile here. So let's just quickly go through these, and we'll see if we have anything with a date. Uh, I'll pull those out, show them to you if they do, and uh, we'll get going. Check the uh, reverses on all of them. And here's a type two reverse with the stars. And here's a type one reverse. So that should be from 1917. And there's no, no legible date, uh, no mint mark. Um, but we do know that that's a type one. So we'll know um, that it's at least 1917. You know, if it was a 1916, that would be absolutely amazing. But and there's no way of telling. All right, so that's all the Standing Liberty Quarters. We'll go on to Washington's. I'm not going to do this one in real time. I, like I said, I'm just looking for 1932D and 1932S. If I find any, I'll pull them aside to show you. If I see any varieties or errors, I'll do the same. Otherwise, we'll do a wrap-up. Um, but yeah, big hole of silver, a lot of fun to go through. Wish me luck on these. All right, well, I went through all the Washington's. Here's the interesting thing. They're from the 30s and 40s. Nothing older than 1948 or 49. Nothing for the 50s and 60s, which really surprises me. So this is um, an old hoard. Um, you know, a lot of PDQ, uh, P, I'm sorry, PDSs. I got Philly, Denver, San Francisco Mint um, from 1941, 42, 43, 44, and 45. Um, uh, the earliest one I found was 1934, um, and, you know, I got a Philly and Denver uh, from 39, Philly and Denver from 1940, also from 1946. So, really nice spread. A lot of duplicates, mostly 41 through 44, but, you know, this was a great hunt. Um, I'm going to start a, a quarter album. I have never done a silver quarter album before, uh, but this is just um, a nice hoard that I got from an estate sale at Silver Milt, Melt Value, and just, just again, a lot of fun. Uh, I got a bunch more coins coming in. Uh, I, I bought a, a, a lot of Barbers and more Washingtons off of um, uh, someone I follow on Instagram, so we'll go through that as soon as they come in. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and in the next hunt, we're going to be doing a coin giveaway um, when I hit 25 subscribers. So subscribe now. Thank you.